So, no, I, I wouldn't say I have a passion for HR. Welcome back to Human Resources for the People. It's a human capital revolution. Today we're going to be talking about Starbucks's unionization problems. They've been kind of all over the board the last uh, last two years, and, and we're going to talk about several of them right now. So National Labor Relations Board Judge Arthur Amcham found that when Starbucks shut down the store near the Cornell University campus, it was done, quote, in large part to discourage unionization efforts in Ithaca and elsewhere. And that's what typically happens. That's why restaurants are not easily unionized especially corporate owned restaurants because the corporate can simply just shut down the restaurant and move it elsewhere not hire those people again and provide a reason for that and so it's very sort of cut and dry as far as i'm concerned these restaurants are not expensive to build uh, and they're not expensive to again not expensive to shut down and so the company is shutting down the college avenue store after it unionized two months and said that they're going to close the other two in ithaca and I think that's really important. The labor troubles that Starbucks has had is really interesting. I mean, it's it's I, I would hate to be their chief human resources officer because it seems to be consistent and constant. I mean, they had the issues in Philadelphia with the with the labor manager. They had these. They have another discussion that we're going to talk about in a little bit uh, with respect to LGBTQ. And so it is a, a truly sort of atrocious time, in my opinion, to be a the chief human resources officer there at Starbucks. Uh, Starbucks Workers United has won over 300 elections in their 9,000 corporate run stores, but they haven't even gotten a collective bargaining agreement in any of those. And, and, and the union growth has slowed. In addition, some of the stores that have voted to unionize have since decertified the union, which is again, is part of the struggle here with, for the Starbucks Workers United, because these stores are slow, they have high turnover, and so very quickly the employees will just simply move on and move elsewhere and different employees will be replaced and those employees will simply decertify. And so it's, it's a very precarious position for Starbucks Workers United because they're very unlikely to be long-term successful. They can you know, quickly organize stores. I don't think that they have much problem with that. I think that they could prevail in elections, especially with the changes done at the NLRB with respect to uh, elections. However, keeping the store is another matter, and that's where you'll see kind of a boom-bust cycle, I think. And the troubles are extended with respect to their LGBTQ issue. So what happened is that uh, the Starbucks Workers United Union is uh, saying that their uh, Starbucks is curtailing or removing displays during uh, LGBTQ uh, Pride Month. They are uh, they are doing this for uh, the the union is alleging that there's a huge change, saying that the company's tone has changed this year, citing his own store manager informing. It, uh, him being the union organizer, Ian Miller in Olney, Maryland, that he needed prior approval to put up pride decorations and that the company was seeking more uniformity in its stores. And so the manager apparently let the employee uh, put up small rainbow flags, but uh, but the company card wasn't used to to buy them. This is pretty interesting because Starbucks has been outspoken in its support for LGBTQ plus employees for decades. And, you know, in uh, a couple weeks ago said that its support was unwavering. I mean, they extended full health benefits to same sex partners in 1988 and added health coverage for gender reassignment surgery in 2013. So Starbucks has always been on the forefront of these things. This goes all the way back to 1996 when LGBTQ partners at Starbucks met informally at Seattle area bars, which eventually became the Starbucks LGBTQ partner affinity group and became then Starbucks pride partner network and had, grew to thousands of partners or employees throughout the world. But from this, the Starbucks union says workers at more than 150 stores will strike over the pride decor because the union representing bar baristas claimed some cafes were not allowed to put up pride decorations. Starbucks says the policy hasn't changed at all and that it continues to support the community. What's interesting here is that Starbucks Workers United says that it filed an unfair labor practice charge over the alleged change in policy. Now, I'm not aware of the collective bargaining agreements for these sites. Uh, my my guess is that they probably have a management rights uh, portion of the collective bargaining agreement, which absolutely allows them to, uh, you know, control pride flags if that's what they wanted to do. But there's no evidence of it.
or there's no evidence that is in formal uh, company policy, at least. And so as a result, Starbucks filed an unfair labor practice charge against Starbucks Workers United, claiming that the union unknowing, or knowingly and falsely stated that Starbucks has banned all pride decorations from its stores. The claim then went on from Starbucks that the union's unlawful campaign includes, without limitation, making deliberate misrepresentations that include maliciously and recklessly false statements about Starbucks' long-standing support of Pride Month and decorations in its stores. This never-ending back and forth is extremely contentious and, you know, again, a, an absolute nightmare from uh, the perspective of the Starbucks HR who consistently is sort of slugging through more and more labor issues. Uh, you know, I, I think it's interesting because Starbucks has long been a fairly progressive company and it seems like at least some of this progressiveness is causing some of these issues, right? Um, this is really the only substantial restaurant chain that I'm aware of that is having substantial unionization problems. And as a result, you know, a lot of it has to do with their hiring and, and, and pract hiring practices over the last, uh, over the last 20 years. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, like share and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye guys.